This episode was brought to you by Audible. From insanely fast striking tongues, to advanced color changing mechanics, to the ability to see ultraviolet light, chameleons are truly wondrous. Hi, I'm Danielle and you're watching Animal Logic. Chameleons are a family of old world lizards whose list of special abilities doesn't seem to end. There are over 160 different species of chameleon. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and many don't change color. They're found in Africa, India, the Middle East, and the Mediterranean, but over half of all species of chameleon are endemic to Madagascar. Chameleons, as a family, are at least 100 million years old, and they likely originated in Africa. First things first, their color. Contrary to popular belief, chameleons primarily change colors to communicate with other chameleons of their species. They don't often change colors for camouflage, with a few exceptions. Not all chameleons can change color, and instead, many naturally resemble their environments though some of these can change their hue a little bit as needed. The Brachysia micra is the smallest chameleon in the world, measuring up to 1.5 centimeters long, about the width of a fingernail, making it one of the smallest lizards ever described. These guys don't change color very much, and instead rely on their brown physique and adorably tiny figure to stay hidden. If they're approached by a predator, they simply close their eyes and pretend that they're a tiny piece of wood. If the predator gets too close, the tiny chameleon will jump off whatever it's on, and because of their tiny size, they're usually fine. If they are nabbed by a predator, they will vibrate their bodies at a very high frequency, a defense that has been known to deter ants. Those that do change color, like the incredibly colorful panther chameleon, can turn into pretty much any color that you can think of. Males are typically more colorful and prettier than the females. The males will turn bright colors to show aggression, usually towards other males. Opposingly, to show submission, they will change to a darker color. Females, on the other hand, will use their colors to let males know that they're ready to mate. Another possible use of their color is to change to a darker color to absorb more sunlight when they're cold. While most chameleons don't often change their colors to background match, there are a few species that do. Namely, the Smith's Dwarf Chameleon, which will change colors to match their surroundings when approached by predators. Their main two predators are Fiscal Shrikes, a type of bird that will impale the chameleons before eating them, and Boomslang Snakes, both very coolly named. The chameleon will put on a better show for the bird as it has much better vision. When approached on a branch, the chameleon will perfectly match its color to the bark, and then stay incredibly still. If they're approached by a boomslang, they'll change colors, but not as convincingly, as the boomslang's vision isn't nearly as good as the fiscal shrikes. But how does their color changing actually work? Chameleon skin is made up of several layers. The outermost layer is transparent. Under that layer are layers containing pigments called chromatophores. Under the layer of chromatophores is a layer of guanine nanocrystals. The space between the guanine nanocrystals affects the color output, and that space is controlled by the chameleon's mood. If a chameleon is relaxed, its nanocrystals will reflect a blue light, which combine with the yellow chromatophores to make the chameleon reflect a green light. Or, if they're excited, the nanocrystals will reflect red light, which combined with the yellow chromatophores will make the chameleon appear bright orange. Think of it like oil and water. The many different colors reflected all depend on the thickness of the layer of oil at any given point. Chameleon skin also has a second layer of iridophores that reflect light close to infrared. This helps with thermoregulation. The more you reflect, the less you absorb. The less you absorb, the cooler you get. But color changing is just one factor in the wonder that is the chameleon. And possibly their coolest feature is their tongue. Chameleons are pretty slow and clunky, but their prey of insects aren't. Luckily, they've developed quite possibly the most advanced tongue in the world. A chameleon's tongue is longer than their entire body, usually by one and a half to two times. There are three main components that make their tongue so effective. The stickiness, the tongue bone, called a hyoid, and the coils of muscle around the bone that launch and retract the tongue. 
When launched, their tongue accelerates insanely fast, getting to 2,500 meters per second in less than a tenth of a second. If you accelerated that fast, you would feel 41 Gs. Fighter pilots have to be able to handle 9 Gs. But for the Ramphalion spinosis chameleon, that just isn't fast enough. These tiny chameleons have a tongue that can accelerate 265 times faster than gravity. If it was a car, it would do 0 to 100 in a hundredth of a second. They hold the record for the fastest muscle acceleration among vertebrates. That's huge. When the chameleon is ready to strike, the muscles around the tongue bone contract creating an elastic recoil. The chameleon then releases the muscles and the tongue shoots forward at incredible speeds. Once the tongue finds its target, it's time for the stickiness to pull its weight. The tip of a chameleon's tongue is covered in a honey-like substance, a thousand times more viscous than human saliva. In fact, it's so sticky that it can hold on to something a third of the chameleon's body weight. Just imagine being able to hold something a third of your body weight with just your tongue. All right, hold the comments. Interestingly enough, the adhesion works better on quick strikes. The faster and stronger the pull, the stronger the bond. When launching the tongue, the tip forms a concave pouch which offers more surface area to grab their prey, increasing their chances of a strong adhesion. Chameleons have rather distinct looking feet. This is because they're zygodactylous, meaning that they have two fingers that point forward and three that point backward. This is extremely helpful when climbing trees, as they're able to grip branches from both sides. Chameleons don't have outer ears, and instead hear by feeling vibrations between 200 and 600 hertz. And finally, their eyes. Chameleons have possibly the most iconic eyes in the animal kingdom. Their eyelids are joined, and they have only a very small pinhole to see through. They can move their eyes independently of one another, allowing them to focus on two things at the same time. This increased range of vision gives them a field of view of 360 degrees. Despite rarely being able to see the same thing with both eyes, they have weirdly good depth perception. They can spot small prey from up to 10 meters away. This is due to how their eyes work. Their eyes give them the best amplification among any vertebrates. The lenses in our eyes are convex, but theirs are concave. This negative lens gives them a drastically increased retinal image size, allowing for much, much more precise focusing. Chameleons in the Kalama genus have little bones that protrude from their head, and they are fluorescent under UV light. This makes them very conspicuous to animals that have UV vision, namely other chameleons, which can see UV light. This makes finding each other in the dark much easier. Many chameleons have evolved interesting abilities not found in other chameleons. For example, the rhinoceros chameleons have developed a rhino-like horn which they use when fighting over mates. Yet the sailfin chameleon takes this a step further. They have evolved two horns on their noses. My personal favorite, the Jackson's chameleon, goes even further and has three horns on its face one on its nose and two on its brows, just like my little triceratops. But possibly the coolest of all is the brown leaf chameleon. These chameleons saw all the pomp and frill their cousins were using and said, eh, nah, I'm just gonna look like a dead leaf. Last week I talked about tigers, specifically a Siberian tiger who tracked down and killed a poacher who had wounded him and stole part of his kill. It's an amazing, sad, and astounding thing that happened, but I wasn't able to tell the entire story. If you want to listen to the full story, I highly recommend that you listen to The Tiger, A True Story of Vengeance and Survival by John Valent, which you can listen to on Audible. If you sign up for a 30-day trial, you can listen to the book for free. Just go to audible.com slash animalogic. Valent tells this unforgettable story and interweaves it with a history of how tigers and humans have coexisted in Russia's Far East for thousands of years. The story focuses on three characters, the poacher, the tracker, and the tiger. But through telling the story, we learned so much about the life of the endangered Siberian tiger and the many ways in which humans have clashed and coexisted with them throughout time. It's a great book. I love Audible, and it has certainly changed the way that I read. 
I love that I can listen to books on all my devices while I work, illustrate, commute, or anything else that I'm doing. It makes it a lot easier to fit reading into my schedule and has given me a lot more to talk about with friends and family. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and now, with Audible Originals, this selection has gotten even bigger and more customizable. Audible members get one credit every month that's good for any audiobook they want, and two Audible Originals they can't get anywhere else. And the books are yours to keep. Also, if you pick a book that you don't like, you can exchange it, no questions asked. If you want to support Animal Logic and listen to your favorite books, start a 30-day trial and your first audiobook is free. Just go to audible.com slash animalogic or text animalogic to 500500 to get started. What animals should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching.